In this video, we look at the importance of how to hand trace algorithms. Hand tracing algorithms, or what can be known as tracing execution, is a skill which involves looking at a printed extract of program code, or program code displayed on a computer screen, and running through the program manually yourself as if you were the computer. This is a really excellent skill to get used to. Take each line of program count one at a time. Write out in a trace table on a scrap of paper the current state of each variable as it changes and as it updates. Note down any output the program would produce as it would produce it. By doing this, you really get to understand the workings of an algorithm and it can really help you spot logical errors. We're going to have a go now at hand tracing four algorithms. Um, I'm going to step you through the first one in a little bit more detail and then we're going to present you with some and you can pause the YouTube video, try hand tracing it yourself and then see if you've got the correct output. So here's a basic algorithm. Uh, we can see here there's a couple of local variables, counter one and counter two, and they're integers, and we've written them up here in a trace table. We've then got uh, a for loop and another for loop inside, and this is our output window, which has nothing in it. Now we're going to skip straight to the next part of this video and see what the completed trace table and output window would look like. So let's just work through this a second. So you would follow this line by line, filling it out as you go. So we start here, declare two variables, then enter here. For counter one equals one. So at that point, your first counter has set to one and you write it in the trace table for, two, uh, for counter one to five. Then we come to the next line. For counter 2 equals 1, so counter 2 has become 1. Then I come to this line, console.write line 0. So a 0 gets printed to the screen. Next, we come back here. Counter 2 has now gone up to 2. So we update our trace table and we now say that this counter is 2. And then it prints another O, and you can see that here. It goes round again and count two gets updated to three, and it prints another O. We now end up at the end here for counter one to three, and we can see the counter is three. We say next, and we do console.write line, so we move down a line, we hit this next, we come up here, counter one has now gone from one to two. So you can see here, we've updated it to two. This program effectively performs a loop within a loop. It does it five times. Each time around this outer loop, the inner loops run three times. We can see the stage of the variables updated each time, and we can see this is what gets produced. Okay, pause this video and carefully work through this algorithm line by line. It starts by asking the user to input a number, and that number gets stored in n. We're going to assume that the code has already been run by this point, and the value that's ended up in n is 6. Now carry on through the rest of this program, updating the contents of n in this trace table as and when it happens, and printing out to the output screen here the values that occur as and when they get printed out. OK, so this is what you should have got n should have been 6, then 3, then 1, then 0, and this is the output you should have got. Can you work out what this program was doing? Well, if you read it from bottom up, 1, 1, 0 is the binary for 6. Try this program with other values for n, and you'll see it works. Okay, so here's another one. This one's a bit more complex. We've got four local variables, x, y, total, and counter. Two of them are input by the user when the program starts, and we're going to assume that x is set to 2 and y is set to 4. Work through this trace table step by step. Unpause the video in a moment and see how well you did. 
Okay, so X and Y shouldn't have been updated after they initially set. Here's what the rest of the trace table should look like. And the output window should say 2, 4, and then 16. Okay, one final one. So this program is written in blocks. We've got one, two, three, four, five procedures. The program starts here at the procedure main, and then most of the program's logic actually occurs by jumping off to other procedures. However, the process is exactly the same. Simply start here, follow the program one line at a time. Every time a variable change was altered, update it in the trace table. Every time something is output, write it here. Pause the video and see if you can get the correct output. So effectively what this video does is print a pyramid. And based on the initial number that you put in, so A, if A is higher, you'll get a bigger pyramid.